In the next step, I want to explain our data model that is closely linked to our research model. The project's data model can be compared to the entries in ancient and medieval herbals. Their authors did not only rely on elaborate plant description, descriptions for plant identification. Each entry of a herbal was headed by a list of synonyms that linked the plant to a certain language or region. It was the plant's different names that made an initial identification possible. We adopt a similar method. The core of our database are several lists of plant names and these indices are sorted by language or by language variant. This classification makes it at the same time possible to rank the plant name on a chronological scale. At the point when all synonymous plant names are interconnected, they will form a semantic grid made up out of related plant names interconnected on a diachronic as well as on a synchronic level. This is a feature that cannot be found in this complexity anywhere else. On a synchronic level, plants are linked according to the parallel language variants recorded in the database. On a diachronic level, the earliest reference of a plant name is the starting point of a string of plant names related by meaning through the different levels of language. The most important aspect of this approach is that the interconnection of plant names is not the end, but the beginning of our research process. Each plant name inevitably leads to the source materials collected on the plant in a certain language area at a certain period of time. This connection is mandatory as any kind of plant studies require the intimate knowledge of plant traditions. These are handed down through different historical sources. So far, modern scholarly treatises of plants and the law refer to important source texts by giving select bibliographical references or by citing relevant passages. I, in contrast, want a comprehensive collection of these source materials. The most preferred scenario would be if the source texts are available both in the original language and in an annotated translation. By linking a source text to the respe respective plant name, the text is automatically linked to the grid of plant names detailed earlier. This will constantly build and augment a semantic web of historical plant information. The text itself are taken from modern editions and transcriptions of manuscripts but always refer back to the source manuscript too. I believe this step is mandatory because through this link we can obtain a continuous connection of the historical sources. It is that sometimes edited texts have to be verified, but it is always the case, that information on the manuscript, its contents, its origin and provenance, as well as, it, as its condition and the information on choirs of a manuscript transport important facts that have to be used for the interpretation and classification of a historical text. Besides historical source material, we need as much research data from other disciplines working with medieval plants as we can get. The medieval plant survey has to present an encyclopedic account of historical plant knowledge. This collection of interlinked data is the basis for the final step of medieval plant studies. As said earlier, the goal is to compose plant monographs that not only detail and explain the evolution for one plant, but that also refer to this accumulated knowledge, making a scholar's interpretation instantly verifiable. This is the plan so far. Now let me tell you about the present stages of the project. What the medieval plant survey provides is a data repository and workplace any researcher or research team can use on their own discretion. We provide only a limited set of rules, which for example includes that software changes can only be made after checking back with us, or the rule that all data has to be accessible on an adequately licensed but open access basis. At the moment we are having very positive talks with several scholars who want to participate by providing electronic source texts. It is expected that some of these texts will be added as soon as the following weeks. 
Now, what content is available? Since the beginning, I have been collecting and building plant name indices. At the moment, we have the following lists of plants, plant names available. A machine-generated Latin word index from Old English sources, Old High German, Old English and Middle High German plant names, the standardized names of plants from New High German and Modern English, as well as an index of botanical plant names. I have also compiled an exemplary text corpus for my dissertation, which consists of early modern cooking recipe texts, which are a very promising source for medieval plant knowledge. We do know of 57 manuscripts that contain collections of these texts. About 34 of these collections have been edited, some of them more than once. The latest editions provide the material for my corpus. At the moment, this corpus holds 2,725 2725 texts, which all have been tagged based on the ingredients. At least one third of these ingredients are plants or plant products. The project website has been online since the start of our project in 2009. It can be reached via the address medieval-plants.org and it features a public blog the data repository and an online workspace. Roman Weinberger has successfully implemented the following core features. We have a tested and approved role-based user management that is matched by a complementary research and working environment, ranging from users that only have access to public material like blog posts or reference information in the repository to so-called advanced users that have the right to add to and to edit the collected data. We have a repository of plant names, texts and images that are adequately tagged and that are searchable via a native and a custom search function. We have a tested and approved feature to interconnect source texts, which a colleague and I used to work with students on the parallel transmission of recipe texts. Future plans are as follows. My colleague is currently implementing an extended interconnection feature for single data sets that will make it possible to finally build the enhanced grid of plant names I described earlier. Since the beginning of the project was built to provide a maximum of service and this is why we are discussing an integration of an XML editor and the publication system. This would make it possible to provide up-to-date research data that can be used beyond the project's borders. So far, the data I have talked about is based on retro digitalized texts recorded in the project's SQL database and referenced by the WordPress software as structured data. Each of these data sets is further described by related metadata and by individual tagging. This, of course, is data that has not existed before, but at the time being, it may not be very useful outside the project. But looking at the trends of the recent years in scholarly data processing, we realized that we have to take this project one step further. At the moment, we are, of course, able to share XML-coded data, but only with a very shallow level of tagging. Following the trends, we want to give this feature more sustainability and have our metadata also referenced at word level within the respective texts. This is why my colleague is currently working on an import-export feature which will link our data to the open source software text grid laboratory that is provided by the German text grid project. And we, with this we will be able to use this tool not only to revise the existing text corpus but also as a tool to input new text from previously unedited sources of all kinds. Parallel to the technical development, I am continuously working on enhancing and enlarging the content of the project. To summarize my presentation, I want to recap my main arguments. After outlining the status quo of medieval plant studies, I have given an outline of our project starting with the research objectives. Then I have presented some details on the software and the data model we use and have finally given a short overview of the current status of the project. I would be delighted if you visit the project online 
and I'm looking forward to receiving your feedback. Thank you for your attention.